Look at that. Okay. Perfect. <clears throat> okay guys, I'm just gonna give it a minute to populate in here and then we can get started. Being Super Bowl Sunday and all, I don't know who will show up. Um, still early yet, the game's not for a while. Just give it a few minutes. Let the audience build, if there's an audience. Mm-hmm. So I found out why I was coughing. Um, I'm not really sick per se, but uh, I found out I have acid reflux. So it's causing me to cough. So I'm drinking a little bit of tea to help with that. Um, but uh, so far so good. Oh. So today we're gonna be doing a little bit of unboxing. I got some stuff. Um, that's the typical stuff that I that I get, but I love I love coming home the the packages. Will a Predator PDL be stable for me? Now <clears throat> I have my iPad right here, so I can watch <laughs> the live stream and access the questions a little bit better than trying to answer off of the phone. Um, it's a pet peeve I have. <clears throat> so let's see. Quick question in. I'm 275 pounds, will the Predator PDL be stable for me? Well, I would have to say yes, old Chicago. I am more than 275 pounds, and the PDL is plenty stable. Uh, I stand up in it. Um, Stability-wise, it doesn't have the greatest initial stability, and but the secondary stability is unbelievable unbelievable before this i had a pelican catch 120 and its initial stability which means um, when you first go to lean over do you feel it in the catch 120 i didn't feel it at all but if i continued to lean in a single direction i would flip instantly the pdl however when you go to lean back and forth you feel it you rock a little bit but just a little uh, but the sec secondary stability kicks in, and uh, I lean pretty far in that boat and have yet to uh, turtle in it. So I would highly recommend it for someone who's worried about stability. It's, it's one of the most stable boats I've been in. I tested out quite a few boats when I first uh, started shopping for a new boat. And uh, I tested out the big rig, which was super, super stable. However... It was super, super slow. Um, from there, I went to a Mayfly, and I really enjoyed the Mayfly. I'm going to get you guys a little bit closer. If you guys can hear something that sounds like someone urinating in the background, it's my sump pump. Uh, water's coming into the sump pump, and that's what it sounds like. But uh, anyways, back to, back to the boats. Uh, the Mayfly was super stable, and it was quick, and it was a really nice boat. But then I got into an old town, Predator PDL, and I loved it. I haven't looked back. Woodlands, Texas Outdoors, what's up? How you doing, man? Again, I have my iPad over here to get the questions. And uh, so I can see them without having to touch the phone to scroll through questions. So Super Bowl Sunday, guys. You guys have any parties to go to? Thank you, old Chicago. No problem. That's what I'm here for. Okay, big, probably over 400 pounds. What kind of kayak should you look into? Um, again, my kayak is extremely stable. I'm not quite 400 pounds myself, but um, really, really stable kayak. Quick kayak. I like it a lot. Um, outside of Old Town, and any of the Predator series boats will be good for you. Uh, they're all rated up to 500 pounds. 
So um, I would check that out. Outside of that, I mentioned earlier the Big Rig from Jackson Kayak. That is a really stable uh, boat. It's a slow boat. It's a lot to get going in that boat, but uh, stability is is huge. I think that boat is uh, 37 or 38 inches wide, maybe even wider, don't quote me. But uh, when I tested it out, it was really stable, but uh, slow going. The native watercraft Titan is a super wide boat, so I would assume that it would handle a ton as well. Um, so I would look into those, the larger boats. But uh, I love my old town, and like I said, it's rated for 500 pounds and really stable for me. Fast, good boat. Uh, what else do we have here? Doing good. I'm chilling with my dad for the game. It's awesome. I've got <laughs> I've got a house full of girls, but luckily. Uh, I've, I've been able to swindle them into Super Bowls every year due to the fact that we just have a ton of appetizers. We kind of do our, our own little um, Super Bowl party, but it's just me and the girls, and they dig the commercials and stuff like that, so they get pretty excited about it. My wife, uh, three daughters, they're, they're, they can't wait for the food, that's for sure. My middle child also happens to have a crush on Tom Brady, unfortunately unfortunately wings yeah wings are a staple at any super bowl viewing i've got the wings uh marinating right now so those will go into the fryer in a couple hours looking forward to those we're having wings we're having pizza what else are we having onion rings a lot of like little appetizery foods it's gonna be good it's gonna be good my wife's making butter beer. For those of you who don't know, butter beer is a Harry Potter thing. My kids are in the Harry Potter, and I will say that it's pretty good. It's like if you guys like root beer or cream soda, it's kind of like that, but it's butterscotch. It's tasty. So, what do you guys think, New England or Philadelphia? The Eagles or the Patriots? Wings, nachos, and Klondike bars. Klondike bars. Oh, man. Those things are awesome. When I was uh, single and cheesy, that used to be a pickup line. What would you do for a Klondike bar? No, it wasn't. That was a bad attempt at a joke. So, guys, I got some packages here. I thought I'd uh, show you guys what I got in the mail. I love coming home and seeing, seeing things... Texans. Texans in 2019. Um, okay. Maybe. Uh, I'm a Lions fan, so uh, I have no delusions of a Super Bowl anytime in my lifetime. What do I got here? Okay, this is a box from the Rod Glove. I ordered another Rod Glove. My last order was, it wasn't a shorted one, I just forgot to order one. So all my rods can be covered now. And I ordered these babies right here. Editing videos today, going to eat. So probably want to watch the game. Just not a fan of the NFL. Watch mostly college football. I hear ya. I hear ya. The NFL can be tricky. I never got into college sports though, so uh, I don't really watch them. I, I'm, you know, I didn't go to a major university that had sports teams, so I never got into it. As a kid, I wasn't into sports at all. I mean, I played sports. I loved playing sports, but you know, I wasn't rooting for any particular team. I love hockey. Um, I like the Lions, and um, I tolerate baseball, and I don't watch basketball. That's it for sports, other than outdoor sports. But I got these right here, the bait glove. This is just something to wrap up my um, the baits on my rods. So when I load up a rod with a bait, I wrap it up like this, so it doesn't the hooks don't get all tangled into whatever. If I'm stuffing them into the kayak, they don't get caught on my battery bag. Um, and if I have them in the car, they don't get caught into the cushions of the seats, stuff like that. 
So I ordered a bunch of those. I got those in the mail. What else did I get? Am I going to watch the XFL in 2020? You know, I don't know. Maybe. Uh, I loved wrestling when I was a kid. I don't watch it so much anymore. I do keep tabs on it, though. And I have friends that love wrestling. I just feel... I don't know. I don't know if I felt feel like I grew out of it. But there's a lot of things I didn't grow out of. So I don't know. I don't know. So uh, the big rumors, from what I hear, is that they're going to sell the WWE and go all in on this XFL project. I don't know. I don't know. It didn't work the first time, so I don't know what's going to happen the second time. I'll probably watch it for a little while and see what happens, especially if Detroit gets a team. You know, I'll give it a watch, but who knows? We'll see. The XFL. So I ordered some more plastics from X-Zone. What did I get here? I got uh, a mini swammer. These are th these are their swim baits, their smaller version, and this is a pearl and chartreuse. And this is their yellow perch. Again, just a, little, a smaller profile. I didn't get that out of my last order. I noticed. And then they got a new creature bait that they didn't have before. So I had to order that. I was excited to, to see that they came out with one. That's their new creature bait. It looks killer. There's some there's some heft to it, but these little guys I believe float. So that's gonna be fun to throw. What color is this one? Oh it stinks. This is a June bug. I got their finesse slammer, which is a drop shot bait. And this is also in the perch color. So it's got that like green iridescence on the top with some black flake and then yellow bottoms with some gold flake. I really love Exxon Plastics, guys. I mean, I know I'm working with them, but I was buying them before that. More creature baits, watermelon, red flake. Got their stick baits. Oh, the larger ones. I ordered nothing but five inches last time, so I ordered some of the bigger ones, six inches. Finesse tubes. I love I love this color pattern. This is it's called five large. The body of it is like a green pumpkin, and then it's got the clear, um, almost purpley smoke tentacles on it. That's gonna be killer on Saint Clair. Last one. Just it's the color is called bumblebee. It's a stick bait. And it's like a black and chartreuse swirl to it. But I got those from X Zone. And I think I think I have one more package coming. Because right after I placed this order, right after I placed this order, they came out with another um, bait that they didn't offer before. So I've got to get it. It, it. It's like a beaver tail type bait. I'm going to try it out. Uh, let's see, the teams are Alabama, St. Louis, San Diego, Oakland, and then a few more. <sighs> yeah, unless I get a local team, I'll probably watch the first couple games just to check it out. But outside of that, I can't see myself being bested unless I have a, a team to root for. So I don't know. XFL. Hmm. You like the soft plastics. I love the soft plastics. I... I used to fish with a ton of power baits, power fishing baits, not, not the, the brand, and not until the last, I'd say two to three years, I slowed things down, started fishing a little more finesse, and uh, started incorporating a lot of plastics, and my fishing game just went through the roof, so... I'm real partial to soft plastics. I dig them a lot. So this is a really cool box that I got in the mail. This is all my Yak Gear stuff. That the fine folks at Yak Gear sent me. I'm getting a new boat. I'm still getting, I'm, it's still gonna be the Predator PDL. 
but I'm just getting a new one, so I'm going to have to rig it up. And they sent me a ton of stuff to rig it up, guys. They sent me their anchor trolley from Yak Gear, some track, uh, some track mounts, their fish stick, or fish grip. Ooh, almost lost you guys. Starports, bases, star starport bases, camera mounts. I'm gonna need those. What else do I have in here? A mount for my fish finder, or depth finder. Visibility flag from Railblazer. Tons of stuff in here, guys. So cool. I got this nifty new hat from them. Tons of stuff in this box. I'm so excited. I can't wait. As soon as I get the boat, I'm going to rig it up. And I'll probably do some videos on how I rig it up. There's a special way I do my anchor trolley on it that, um, that doesn't require me to drill into my boat, which I love. Can't do that on every single kayak, but um, the Predator model boats, you definitely can. And I'll show you how I do that. And then... I think I'm gonna do a video on how I do my filming, how I set up my cameras for a long day of, uh, of filming. I always have one camera filming consistently and then I have another camera that I turn on and off throughout the process and I'll show you guys that as well. But um, those are my boxes that I unboxed. Oh, there's one more box that I need to ship. It's not an unboxing. I have to ship the prize pack out, guys. All this goodie, all these goodies. Um, you guys know I have my video, my State of the Union video up on the channel. Where um, I'm doing a giveaway. I'm doing a big giveaway. And I need to send that out. I need a thousand subs though. Oh man, I did it. I hate using that word. That's my sump pump. I hate using the sub word. But I need to reach a thousand subscribers by February 20th, and we've I've done well. We've done well. I've I've gotten up to uh, over 700 subscribers, but I need to reach that milestone to send that out. So hopefully, with a few more shares of the videos, um, I'm I'm a, I'm gonna try to upload a ton, and hopefully I can get that uh, subscriber number up to a thousand, and I can send that out to you guys, to a lucky winner. Fingers crossed. Um, the other part of this video was a Q&A, and I got some questions from my Instagram, I've got some questions from my Facebook page, and then I got some questions from uh, some YouTube subscribers as well. So I'm going to answer those questions for you guys, let you guys, um, I don't know, get to know me a little bit better. And if you have questions while you're watching live, please shoot them across and I'll answer them. I use a lot of Zoom products. Zoom is good. When I was uh, when I started out, I loved Zoom because uh, one because of price point. You'll notice in my uh, my fishing gear, my baits, price is important to me. I'm not a cheapskate by any means, but how do I put this? The item I'm using has to have the value of that price point. So if I'm just throwing a plastic, and at the end of the day, it's just a plastic worm, guys. If I'm throwing a plastic worm out in the water, and it's gonna last maybe, depending on the company, two or three fish, I'm not gonna spend $9 on a package of, of worms. But with Zoom, you can spend two, three bucks on a package of worms, and it was awesome. So Zoom was a good company that I liked using. I think, yeah, I've got some fat heads right here that I used. Other companies I liked, I liked uh, Big Bite Baits. Those were good plastics. Uh, really, I just I, I picked up anything, especially if it was on sale. But I'll go through some of these questions that I got through my Instagram account and through Facebook, and I'll answer some questions there. And like I said, if you have any, just post them up. Uh, the first question I have is, how did I get started in kayak fishing? That's funny. I got started in kayak fishing when I upgraded my regular fishing boat. I used to have a 
16 foot um, skiff, you know, that was modded out, um, kind of like a bass boat. And I had that for several years. I loved that thing and I would go out fishing with that. I decided to upgrade one day and <laughs> I got a 18 foot four winds fish and ski model. So it was a nicer boat, um, definitely a nicer boat. And it was more of a pleasure cruiser than anything, but you could easily convert it into a fishing boat. Um, you can you can lay out the deck. It had um, it had a it had a live well. I had a trolling motor on there, a bow mounted one. And you can put the deck out in the front, and you had fishing platform. So it was a great boat, and I loved it. But because I had a bigger boat, I could now fish bigger bodies of water. So I wanted to get out on Lake St. Clair, and I wasn't familiar with the lake. I started watching YouTube videos to learn about Lake St. Clair fishing. So I watched, um, basically I watched the Eternal Angler. If you guys uh, haven't checked him out, you should look for him. He fishes Lake St. Clair almost exclusively, but uh, he's got some nice videos. Lots of big, small mouth. He does musky fishing, pike. It's, it's, it's a good channel. Um, but anyways, I started watching that to, to, get a, to get a better idea of Lake St. Clair and from there I started watching other fishing YouTube um, channels, you know, Fluke Master, uh, came across some of the Googans, stuff like that. But I came across, and it's not, I know you guys are going to think it's Chad Hoover, but it's not. I didn't, he, he's not the one who got me in a kayak. The person who got me in a kayak was... Um, Marty Zoffinger. So Zoffinger has a channel on here. He does kayak fishing and he did like a, a poor man's kayak fishing. He had a simple kayak that he converted and he would do amazing things to his kayak to get it fishable. And I would watch this guy and I'm like, wow, that's, that's pretty neat. And when they were headed up north and we stop off at a, at a, at a store on the way, it's, uh, it's like a fisherman's haven. And they had this huge kayak section, and I just said I decided I just bought a kayak. So I got a Catch 120 from uh, Pelican, and that was it, guys. One trip out on the water, and I was hooked. It was amazing. I, in that same year, I upgraded my fishing boat and I got a kayak. I've been in my fishing boat, and this is two years ago. I've been in my fishing boat maybe a dozen times maybe a dozen times since then since i've owned it and my kayak i've been in probably close to 100 times 200 times who knows i go out as much as i can i love it so that's how i got into kayak fishing what else do i have what is my personal best my pb uh, i'm gonna assume you mean bass i forget who asked the question I'm gonna assume you mean bass, and my PB Smalley was just this past year, and I was in Cass, uh, Cass River in Frankenmuth, Michigan, and I caught a smallmouth bass, uh, close to 19 inches, close to four pounds. It was huge, it was awesome, it was nice. We get them up here pushing seven pounds, so it wasn't a pig, Per se, but uh, it was nice for me. And for largemouth, I never, I never really uh, measured it because I, it didn't happen within the last couple of years. But uh, I would say it was around 20 inches, pushing around 40 or pushing around four pounds. Who knows? Nice studio setup. Thank you, fish and stuff, and great live stream, bro. Thank you. I appreciate it. I really do. Thanks for joining us. Um, my favorite lake. That's a tough one. That's a tough one. I fish. We have a little place up north. And I probably fish that lake more than any other lake. And uh, I love it. I never go out there and skunk. Which is why I love it. But uh, I've never caught size on that lake. If you, if you watch one of my uh, videos called... Uh, I think it's Dinks and Loons, 
we have great loons on the lake, but uh, nothing but dinks in the lake as well. I've seen, I've seen larger fish in the lake, but uh, there's such an abundance of smaller bass that that's, that seems to be all I catch in there. So I love that lake, but it's not, it, does, it doesn't treat me well size-wise. Locally around where I live um, most of the year, I, I really like Stony Creek. It's a metro park here, and uh, a lot of people bag on it, but I always do well. I, 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 the numbers aren't through the roof, but I always catch decent size. I caught my master angler rock bass there. I caught a master angler crappie. That's what this patch is for. Um, and the bass are nice. I've caught three, four, five pounders in that, in the, or close to five pounds, I should say, in that lake, which isn't, I know, I know for some of you southern guys that doesn't sound like big, big fish, but for here up in Michigan, it's nice. So I'd, I'd have to say it's a toss up between those two lakes. And then I, I do like going out on Lake St. Clair. I actually go out on the kayak now. It's funny, I was afraid to go on Lake St. Clair with my last fishing boat. Upgraded to the newer fishing boat, and I'm out, I'm out there on my kayak. It's funny. Everyone's getting to know each other. That's awesome. Come to Texas, we will get you on a double-digit largemouth. Um, you know, that's not out of the realm for me. I'm hoping to do some traveling uh, this coming year, fishing-wise, and I'd love to come down to Texas. I've been down to Texas several times. I've been to Austin, and I've been to Dallas, both both uh, great cities. I did it for uh, my work outside of here, which I think is coming up, uh, which is the next bait, uh, next question. No, no. My favorite bait for bass. My favorite bait for bass used to be a spinnerbait. I used to throw a spinnerbait nonstop, but now um, it's the drop shot. I know it's not an exciting technique, but uh, I killed it this past year, drop shotting. And I almost drop shot in every condition, every type of situation. It's crazy. I, um, I'll do a finesse style when I'm out deeper and in open water. And then I'll do something close to like a power shot where I Texas rig, uh, or not Texas rig, but a weedless hook, weedless rig my plastic and get into the weeds and, and the brush and uh, I've been doing well so drop shot for me I've been loving it um, I've got all th these are all my older drop shot baits I used to use zoom I used to use z-man whatever was on sale really I've got Cabela's uh, but now I use the swammers from uh, X-Zone we have any questions coming up? What lure would you use if you could only take one? I think I think I just answered that. I think I just answered that. I would drop shot all day long. It doesn't. I don't drop shot like most people. I actually use it like a search bait. Um, I do a lot of dragging around with it, so I'll toss it out far far as I can sling it and then I'll just slowly work it back to me and I'll fan cast bring it back to me and I do really well long and it works ninja everyone's getting their own charge that's good okay okay so what do you do for a living um and then the next question I'll kind of answer two questions at once what do you do for a living? And then someone else asked, are you the comic book artist, Bill Pukowski? Um, Yes and no. Uh, I am Bill Pukowski. I am an artist. I'm not per se a comic book artist, but I have worked in comic books. Um, I consider myself more an illustration or uh, an inter entertainment illustrator. Oh, Jesus. An entertainment illustrator. I do a lot of stuff... Um, for pop culture properties. Like I do a lot of work for Star Wars and Marvel Comics and um, The Walking Dead, stuff like that, movies and TV shows. Um, I don't work, like I'm not on set with, uh, with Abrams directing Star Wars or anything like that. 
but uh, I work on a lot of licensed product, like uh, trading cards, magazines, posters, stuff like that. Um, and then I also teach um, illustration and design at a local college here in Michigan. So that's what I do for a living. Um, it's pretty neat. I get to, uh, outside of that, I also do like, I do the comic book convention scene. So I'll travel around the country doing comic book conventions and that's what brought me to Dallas and Houston. Or Dallas and Austin was a couple comic book conventions. But uh, that's what I do for a living. Sounds like an awesome job. It is an awesome job. I, before that I was in corporate banking um, so that was, you know, shirt and tie, the whole, the whole corporate, uh, political scene. Oh, it was horrible. It was horrible. I hated it. And, uh, I haven't looked back since I got into the, into illustration and it's been really cool. I, I really can't complain guys. Um, I get to do what I like. You know, I was a kid wanting to grow up and draw Spider-Man or, you know, Chewbacca and, now I draw Spider-Man and Chewbacca. It's crazy. Um, but, but, I went to school to be school art teacher, LOL. <laughs> it's funny, my, uh, my high school art teacher, his name was Mr. Stevenson, and he had a big impact on my life, obviously. I, I excelled in his class, but I remember one day, I was sitting in class, and uh, he was teaching, and came around and kind of checked up on our where we are in our project and I remember talking to him and I was like you know Mr. Stevenson I'd love to do artwork as a living can I do artwork as a living can I can can I do this can I support a family can I support myself I I'm worried about that because you know my parents didn't encourage me to go into art by any means and he looked at me deadpan and he looks at me and he goes you absolutely can as long as you marry well so there you have it. That's why I got into corporate banking first, because uh, I was freaked out. You know, you you kind of you kind you're kind of chasing those dollar signs all your life, and you kind of lose lose track of what you really enjoy. And if you do something for a living that you really enjoy, it's not work, guys. It's not. So. So yeah, I, I I draw pop culture characters and and I go fishing now. I do what I like. I do what I love. Um, let me just get through some of these questions. Make sure I'm getting everyone. There's always a hater, guys. It never fails. For the kids, LOL, I can't draw anything, but my 16-year-old son is a wicked artist. Encourage it, man. Encourage it. My daughter, my, uh, my oldest is 12 years old, and she can draw circles around me when I was that age. She's amazing, and she has no desire to go into art. She wants to be a doctor. So, um, you know, that's music to any parent's ears. As long as she loves what she's doing, I'm happy. Someone asked best kayak for big guys. Yeah, uh, they've asked a couple times, and I've answered a couple times. Um, but I'll, I'll reiterate, I don't, I don't have an issue with that. For bigger guys, and I'm a bigger guy, uh, I, lo I love my Old Town Predator. I do. I, I fish out of a Predator PDL. Super stable. Um, super f fishable. I mean, it's got great fishing features. And it's really nice. I love that thing. Outside of Predator, and a any of the Predator models are good. Like I said, they're rated for 500 pounds, so it's plenty. But outside of that, Jackson Big Rig, um, Native Titans... Uh, Jackson Mayfly, any of the bigger boats will suit you. If, if you're on a budget, I started out in a Pelican Catch 120, and that thing is rated to 400 or 450 pounds, 
And I love that thing. Uh, but I, I upgraded. Upgraded big time, actually. But it's a great boat. Either one. Pro Angler. <laughs> that water sound is making me have to pee. Yeah, sorry about that. I'm right by my sump pump. I don't know if you guys have to deal with that in the south. But uh, here in Michigan, uh, water drains towards the house. I know, it's weird. It drains towards the house in... in it, it has a runoff inside the house. And it's, it's a thing called a sump pump. And it pumps water in, pumps water out. And when snow is melting, this is what I listen to. I wasn't thinking of that when I put the studio here. So I may have to move this setup. Who knows? But... I, I wouldn't want you guys leaving the stream to go pee, so I think I will move it. Uh, let me get back to some of these questions. Uh, a good starter kayak. What's a good starter kayak? Uh, a good starter kayak is anything you can afford, in my opinion. Try to get uh, the best bang for your buck and try to test out kayaks. Like I said, the Catch 120 is an awesome budget boat. I would, I that was my starter kayak. You can, uh, how much are those things? I don't know. They're like 600 bucks, 700 bucks, maybe 800 with that uh, that newer model of it, of the 120, the 120 uh, Next NXT, something like that. Um, but they're super stable. They're not super heavy, so that's good. Uh, comfortable seat, high-low position, fishability. It's got uh, tracks and all that good stuff. Rod holders. I liked it. It was nice. It didn't track super well, but I added a skeg to it, so that helped out. Um, you know, I know a lot of people do the Sun Dolphins, and that's a Michigan-based company, so I'd love to support them, but... My daughter has a, a sun dolphin and um, the foam blocks came loose and it, you know th those are put in to help with buoyancy so they knock around in the back so they're not the best made kayaks but uh, if that's what you get whatever gets you out on the water guys it's a floating piece of plastic uh, an ascend kayak those are nice um, Old Town makes some uh, nice sit-inside kayaks that are a little cheaper, like the Loon and the Horizon, or no, the Heron. Those are nice. Um, buy used kayaks. You know, uh, used kayaks, <clears throat> you can get a nicer boat for a lot less, so try that. Uh, what's the next question? <laughs> what does my wife think? Uh, I don't know if that's backwards for you guys, but, uh, my wife is a very supporting woman. I love my wife. She's given me three beautiful girls, but, um, I think she would like it if I were home more often. And hanging out with her more often. And it's not like I don't. But, uh, I don't know. I think it bugs her when I go fishing more than once a week. I'll say that. But outside of that, she's very supportive. Um, she'll, like, do things. Like, she, like, these bobber lights. You know, that that's that's a, that's my wife's touch. Um, little things like that. She'll, you know, like, Christmas was all fishing related for me. So she she supports me, but at the same time, she keeps me grounded. Let's say that. I'm trying to be very political with that answer, obviously. Mm. Do I take my kids fishing? I absolutely take my kids fishing. When they were younger, they loved to come fishing with me, and it's been a Father's Day tradition for a long time where they we would just go go fishing now that they're older they don't like it as much so I don't take them as often as I would like to what happens is they like to come out kayaking so we'll go out on the water 
and they'll kayak around me. They'll kayak around um, and check things out, look at animals while I fish. And every now and then I'll talk them into tossing, tossing a line or two every now and then. And they'll, and they'll, I think, I think they'll, they'll only do it just to make me happy. So I take them when I can, they fish when they want, but they're at least with me. They're kayaking around me. So that's cool. Uh, that's why I'm looking for someone who loves fishing as much as we do or even more. <laughs> You know what? They're out there. They are out there. And I think it's my fault, really. You know, I never offered to take my wife fishing with me when, when we first started dating. And she'd come out on the boat with me, but, you know, she's she's out there suntanning or, or lounging, reading a book, something like that. So I never put a rod and reel in her hand. So I don't know. Tell them more fish for you. <laughs> okay, I'm going to get back to these questions, guys. Again, if you guys have a question, just pop it up here. Otherwise, I have this list of questions that I pulled from my Instagram and my Facebook and uh, earlier videos. Uh, da, 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 da. What do you watch on YouTube? Okay. I do watch fishing channels, obviously. Um, I mentioned Fluke Master. I watch him. Gene's a good guy. Uh, what else do I watch? I like uh, I like Greg Blanchard. Check him out if you guys don't know. He's a kayak fisherman. He does a lot of uh, kayak tournaments, and he kind of brings you through that experiment uh, or experience. And that helped when I started fishing kayak tournaments. You know, it's kind of when you first when you first go to enter a kayak tournament. At least for me, it was a little intimidating. And uh, watching his videos helped me helped me understand the process, and that seemed too much of a noob. So, um, I, I check him out. Um, I mentioned the Eternal Angler earlier. He's a cool guy. Um, but I don't watch too much fishing. Uh, I watch a lot of my subscribers' fishing channels. They'll put up stuff. There's this, there's this new subscriber that I subscribe back to. Some pump. His name is uh, the Crappie Killer, and when I first watched a couple of his videos, I thought, "Oh man, this is gonna be rough." But you know what? He has grown on me. He's he's really funny, and I don't know. I can just watch that guy. Outside of fishing, uh, like I said, I keep up with wrestling. I don't really watch wrestling, but I'll watch some uh, some of the wrestling highlights on YouTube. I like watching hockey highlights on YouTube. Um, I, I watch some nerdy stuff, you know, top 10 nerd is a channel I watch and, you know, they just do top 10 lists of comic book characters and, uh, pop culture stuff. Uh, oh, and I watch a lot of bushcraft videos, um, outside of fishing, I like to do a little bushcraft and I watch, I watch Scrambled O. So if you guys have any desire to watch anything that's bushcrafty, camping, outdoors, hiking, these are some channels you can check out. Scrambled O, he's hilarious. When I first started watching this guy, I wanted to punch him in his face. And I've told him this, but uh, he's grown on me beyond belief. I love it. I love his videos. He's hilarious. He did, he has good uh, video skills. I watch Joe Robinette, and he's a local guy. He's in Canada, but he's only across the river from us. He's in Windsor, Ontario, which is across the river from Detroit. Um, I watch that guy. He's good. So I watch stuff like that. Um, Looper. You know, pop culture stuff. That dude is funny and his friend too. I'm going to assume you're talking about the crappie killer. What else do I have here? Why a kayak over a boat? I told you guys, I got a brand new shiny boat. I mean, it wasn't new. I bought it used. But for me, it was new. So a new-to-me boat, shiny, beautiful. 
and I got a kayak in the same year. And I outfished that boat in my kayak 10 to 1. It's just something about being in a kayak, guys. You're, you're, you're on the water. You're with the water, if that makes sense. You feel, you feel the water through the, the kayak. You're so close to it. And you're so close to nature. You hear things that you would never hear in, 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 a, in, a, in a fishing boat or a bass boat. I see so much more. You know, I, I've seen, I've, it's like stopping, you know that saying, uh, slow down, stop, and smell the roses? That's exactly what it is. You slow down, you hear things you wouldn't hear, you see things you wouldn't see, you feel things you wouldn't feel. Nature is in your face. I mean, it's 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 amazing. I, I'd rather be on the water than anything else. I'd rather be in a kayak than anything else. Oh, I just love it. I just love it. And fishing, I think fishing has improved for me. I'm not I'm not a loud boat coming onto a fishing site. Um, I can feel and read things and see things a little bit better. It's just it's just an experience that is amazing. It's therapeutic beyond belief. You know, there's, I never have a bad day in the water. I've had bad fishing days on the water where I'm not catching much, but it's not a bad day on the water. So that's why I prefer a kayak to a boat. I just love it. Um, what else do we have? Which kayak, this is a good question. Which kayak would you choose outside of an Old Town? Okay, so I love my Old Town Predator. Love my Old Town Predator. I work with Old Town. I'm on the pro staff team. I have to say I love Old Town. I don't have to. I wouldn't have, I, w I asked to be on the pro, uh, pro staff team. Not, they didn't invite me. I chose to be because I love the boat that much. I believe in it that much. But the boat I almost bought before I bought my Predator was a Jackson Mayfly. That Jackson Mayfly was really nice. It had tons of fishing features on the boat. Jackson does a good job of like thinking of everything to give someone in their kayak right out the gate. So if you buy a Jackson kayak, you have you have your rod holders, you have your track mounts, you have um, you know like all sorts of doodads. I think they give you water bottles now and everything you would need for a day out on the water. You know, it's just like grab your grab your rods and go type thing. And it was super stable and it was quick. So I just got done demoing a big rig, which was super stable, had tons of fishing features, but it was so slow. It took it took a lot of effort to get that boat moving. So when I got into the Mayfly, I was like, wow, this is great. This is pretty much, you know, a smaller version of the big rig. So that would, that would be my answer, the Jackson Mayfly. I almost got it, um, but then I, I demoed a Predator PDL, and that was it. That was it. What else do we have here? What do you do for fun? What do I do for fun? I go fishing, but I assume you're asking what I do for fun outside of that. So outside of that, um, I love spending time with my kids. Each one of them are so different from one another. They have personalities all their own, but I love them all. So I love spending time with them. So if I can find an activity to be with them, that's what I'm usually doing. Outside of that, um, like I said, I like bushcrafting. So starting fires, taking a little hike, camping, outdoors. I love that stuff. So I'm, I'm, I'm doing that. And I like watching movies. Um, I read books. I like cooking stuff like that. I'm not huge in the video games. I used to be, but you know, back when I was in the video games, they came in cartridges, not on discs. See that gray hair? Yeah. Video games came on cartridges. Uh, what do I do for fun? Ooh. <laughs> This was probably the hardest question I got on my social media. The hardest question. If I could only choose one to eat for the rest of my life, would it be a cheeseburger or pizza? 
That is so hard. So hard. Those two foods are amazing and so versatile. On one hand, you can go with pizza and say, you know what, you can have a cheeseburger pizza or any type of pizza. And then on the other hand, you can have a pizza-esque cheeseburger and just go with that. So it's a tough one, but I think I'm going to have to go with cheeseburger. Yeah. Yeah, cheeseburger. What a question. Um, why doesn't your buddy in the videos fish with you? I'm going to assume you mean my buddy Bruce. I fish with a lot of different guys. Most of them do go fishing. But I have one buddy that I go kayaking out with. And while I fish, he's just kayaking around. He doesn't fish. So I'm assuming you mean Bruce. I don't know why he doesn't fish. I don't think uh, it's something he's gotten into. I don't think it's something that he got exposed to as a kid. So it's not an interest of his. Um, I did say that I'm going to put a rod in his hand at one point, And he seemed open to it. So maybe I'll get him fishing this year. Maybe I'll get him fishing this year. Um, my favorite species to fish for. That's, a, that's, that's another tough one. When I go out fishing, um, I target bass a lot. I'll let you in on a little secret, guys. Outside of panfish, I would say bass is probably the easiest fish to catch. I know that's going to upset some of the fishing community, some of the bass people, but it really is. I enjoy catching them. Um... But there's something in the difficulty of trying to catch a muskie or walleye or um, trout. So I, I enjoy the challenge of those fish. Um, carp, you know, a lot of people view carp as garbage fish, but go out there and try to catch one. Go out there and try to catch one. Not snag it and not uh, bow hunt or bow fish it, but try to catch it on conventional um, means. They're tough. And then when they do bite on, they give you such a fight. Such a fight. Um, but since we're all about bass, um, I'm going to say a smallmouth. I think they fight um, pound for pound. They fight ten times harder than a largemouth. I've only got a couple questions left on this list. And then I think it'll be done, guys. Which is good because I think I'm nearing an hour. Wow. I can't believe I've been talking an hour. Um, can I go fish? Can I go fishing with you? Yes. Yes. You can absolutely go fishing with me. If you're local, obviously it's easy. If you want to travel to Michigan, obviously that would be easy on me. I would never turn down anyone who came a long distance to go fishing with me. Um... I did mention that I want to travel a little bit more this year, so I want to travel further south and do some fishing myself. And I think what I'll do is I'll I'll, I'll put I'll put feelers out there to my subscribers, and like if I'm traveling through Kentucky or Ohio, Illinois, further south, I'll let you guys know. And if you want to go fishing, we'll go fishing. Well, that's my, oh, my last question, guys. Bait caster or spinning gear? What is my preference? What do I like better? Well, I don't know that I like one over the other. They have two different applications. A bait caster is for accuracy and a spinning cast, or a, spin, a spinning reel is for distance. So if I'm working a light finesse presentation, I'm working it on spinning gear. If I have something a little bit heavier or if I'm pitching, it's with a bait caster. I really don't have a preference on to which one I use. If I had to pick one, I guess I guess I would pick spinning. It's a little more versatile. I can get it out there further. Um, but at the end of the day, I use what I need for that particular situation. Okay, that's it. Uh, those are all the questions I got through social media. 
I think I've answered all the questions that came across here in the feed. Um, if I didn't, just make sure to reiterate the question in the comment after this video is posted. And I'll answer it. But I wanted to do a giveaway. I was hoping to do a giveaway while people, while people were here, but I think it's dwindled down too much to ask what your favorite uh, fishing technique is, because then I would have given out something based on that. So, what I'll do is, after this video is posted, after the video is posted, comment on the video. Obviously, give it a like. And uh, you have to be subscribed. But comment down below what your favorite technique to fish is. Your favorite technique to fish is. Yeah, I think I think that's correct grammar, is it? I don't know, it sounds weird. But, uh, so if you like to drop shot, let me know drop shot. If you like to do a Carolina rig, drag a Senko, wacky rig, something along those lines. Let me know what your favorite is, and I will send out to you if you win a package of baits so if you say my favorite thing to do is a wacky rig senko then i'm gonna get a package of stick baits and say you won a package of stick baits if your favorite thing to do is top water then you might get a live target rat okay so it's all going to be based on what you like so comment below make sure you're subscribed to the channel Comment below and let me know what your favorite fishing technique is. And then I'll do a random uh, comment picker and pick a winner and send out a bait to you guys. I really appreciate appreciate. I really appreciate you guys joining me on this live stream. I hope you guys enjoyed some of the stuff I showed you and I hope you guys um, got to know me a little better, I guess. If you have more questions that you would like to ask, leave them in the comments below and I'll do another one of these. Maybe I'll do a series where I do 20 questions with Bill. I think that's what I was planning on doing with this video as well. I was planning on just doing the 20 questions. I think I went over. Oh well. But uh, if you guys like this, I'll do a series 20 questions with Bill and we'll do 20 questions every now and then. But again, if you'd like to win some baits, just let me know what your favorite fishing technique is in the comments. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. And I'll do a drawing next week and send you out some, uh, some free baits. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm Bill. This was Catch-22, and I'll catch you guys out on the water.